Today we want to focus on the budgeting process within Outlook Soft. And we're going to begin the session in the Performance Management Dashboard, which you've already seen as part of the overview demo to the application, where users come as kind of the launch point to review performance, participate in business process flows, and then of course we have the action pane over on the right hand side, which is going to be useful for us today as we walk through a budgeting process from beginning to end. So the first thing we want to do, just in review, down at the bottom here we have our process window. And the process window is going to show us uh, visibility into any business processes that we participate in as a user in the organization. So in my case, I can see I have a variety of different business processes, one of which is the annual budget. And that's the process we're going to be focusing on today. So I'm going to go ahead and select the annual budget business process flow, and that's going to bring me out to a page where I can actually open the business process flow and Outlook Soft utilizes something here called a data region. And the data region is specific to kind of a slice of information, a slice of data you can think of it as. So I want to select, for example, which version of the data I'm going to be utilizing. And you'll notice here I have a variety of versions available, um, everything from actual budget, different forecast versions. We're going to be focusing today on budget version two. So we're simulating kind of going through a new budgeting process. The entity that I might want to select, in my case, we're going to focus today on Italy. But again, the idea is, remember, to support multiple users going through the same business process. So we have people all over the world participating in the annual budget process. We need to know what, which um, section of data this specific user is going to be working on. And then our time period in this case is 2007. So we'll go ahead and select that, and that's going to bring us into the actual business process flow. And just like we've seen, in some of the other business process flows, we're going to have on the left-hand side of the page a set of steps that are required for us to complete the budget process. And on the right-hand side, we have a live chart that's showing us some comparative information, budget version 1 and 2, um, as well as some top-level targets, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Now, the first part of the budgeting process is to initiate the budget and set targets. And typically, this step is going to be completed by someone centrally um, in the organization that's going to be getting the budget ready, essentially, to, to be open. So we might do things like copy to a new version, as we can see here, budget version 1 to budget version 2. We might need to enter some different rates for currency, um, assumptions for CapEx and human capital and, and that type of thing, as well as maybe any top-down targets that need to be, that need to be um, set. So as you can see, um, step one is currently the only step in the budget that we are able to begin working in. We can't move on as a user to step two until we complete um, this initial step of initiating the budget. So the first thing that we may want to do as part of the process is create a new budget version. And this is actually going to open Outlook Soft for Excel. And it's going to bring us into Data Manager, which has a nice little assistant that walks you through the process of creating a new version of a budget of a forecast would work the same way for any set of data. And what's nice about this is it allows the user um, and the or the administrator, the manager, to select specifically what they would like to copy. So for example, in my case, I might want to copy from budget version one into budget version two. And I may want to um, do that for only a specific subset of entities, or I may want to take all. So I have the ability to limit the selection of specifically what's going to be utilized to see the new budget version. Now, in our case, we've already gone through this process. And you can see that in the business process flow, budget version 1 in the graph is exactly identical to budget version 2. So we've already completed that step. Now, the next thing we may need to do is enter some of those rates. So for example, I may need to input currency rates. And that's going to open a currency rate schedule. The same schedule could be used and typically is used for actual information as well. It's going to vary based on category of information, time as you can see. And here we see the ability to store both average and end of month rates for a variety of currencies. And you could have additional rate types for historical currency and that type of thing uh, if that's something that your organization requires. So we would come in, adjust any rates we need to adjust, and then just go back to the business process flow. And then the next step we're going to take a look at is some of the human capital rates. So we'll go ahead and select 
that next sub step. And again, the benefit of the business process flow is it's kind of guiding us through these different steps. So as I um, move on to the next thing, it's taking me to the appropriate interface, opening the appropriate template. So I don't have to remember from year to year, from quarter to quarter, where I go to get this information. Now this first, we have several different types of human capital assumptions that we're going to input. The first one is um, some of the uh, percentage-based um, benefits and, and um, headcount costs. So for example, here's a list of accounts that are going to be calculated based on a percent of salary. And you can see that the, the percentage could vary by position, it could vary by by country. And again, this is something that is very configurable. So if your rates are more truly global, so it's the same rate regardless of position, regardless of country, then you could certainly set it up just to have one rate that applies everywhere. Or you could get even more specific and have rates that are um, all the way down at an employee level of detail. We also have cost per head rates. So these would be things that are driven based on a dollar or whatever the local currency of a particular country would be um, per head. So for example, in um, East US, we see that for other benefits, we have $25 per head allotted um, for most of the positions here. And we can see that we have something like a car allowance, which is much more common in Europe uh, for some of our European countries. The last thing that we may need to adjust is some of the FICA caps. And you can see here um, the input of that rate, again, could vary by position, although um, currently, you know, typically that's just a global rate. So after taking a look at any of those rates and adjusting, making any adjustments we need to, we're ready to return back to the business process flow. And at this point, we want to um, take a look at the standard CapEx rates. Now, this is, again, something that's very configurable in the application, but this allows you to set standards for some of your asset purchases. So when we get into the capital expenditure planning, in a few minutes, we're going to be talking about a standard list of assets. So in our case, here's a standard list of assets that we purchase on a regular basis. So instead of having one budget manager budget at a laptop at $5,000 a piece and somebody else budgets at $1,000 a piece, we have, we're able to apply some standards um, to some of those costs. It's also nice because it allows us to track the quantity of, of each assets by month, which allows us to, you know, perhaps negotiate some better discounts and that type of thing from a procurement perspective. So now we'll go back to the business process flow. So now we have all, all of our global rates essentially identified, set up in the application. And again, if we needed to make any adjustments, we could do that. And now we're ready to set some of the top-down targets. So a lot of our customers go through both a top-down budgeting process as well as a bottoms-up um, process. So what we want to take a look at here is setting some of the top-level targets and then the ability to push those down so that budget managers in an individual department or an individual country can easily compare their bottoms up budget, their input with the top down target and see how they're doing compared to the target. So as you'll see, this is a very high level in our case um, operating income statement and we're looking at a five year plan here. So what I might want to simply do is come in and begin to adjust some of the targets. Now let's say in my case, the only thing I really need to adjust is net revenue. And I don't really know exactly what the, um, the new number is going to be, but I've been told that we're going to strategically try to raise um, the old target by about 5%. So what I can use is, again, in the action pane, I have all of my available tasks for this particular schedule that we're reviewing. So I might want to select weight data. And this is what allows me to come in and put in, for example, we want to increase by 5%, and you'll notice that automatically updates the number for me. So again, pretty typical. We could use any of our native Excel capability, just like you've already seen, um, but that spreading, trending, and weighting gives us just another set of tools at our disposal. And then we just want to go ahead and submit that back to the application. And as we submit the information to the application, as you'll recall, we have a variety of things um, that happen. So we have currency conversions taking place, um, if applicable. We have um, any types of calculations that are occurring in the application. Those all happen in real time as the data is being submitted. So now we've successfully adjusted our top level target. So now we're just going to go back to the business process flow. And then we need to actually go through the process of allocating this target down to the um, individual entities. And as you can see right now, we haven't done that. Okay, and if we want to take a look at a version comparison report, for example, we can come in at this point and see that the target for 2007 has not been allocated down. 
Okay, so currently it's sitting at zero. And we also see that our budget version one and budget version two are exactly identical right now. So we haven't made any additional changes um, to budget version two at this point in time. So let's go back to the business process flow. And then we're just going to run the um, target allocation. Again, this is going to take us back into that data manager layer that we looked at earlier. And we have a nice little wizard that's going to walk us through and allow us to select specifically where we want to run the allocation. So I want to run this for the top level, which is where we input the targets for 2007, uh, which is the only year we really need to allocate for the, the bottoms up comparisons. So go ahead and make those selections and that's going to kick off the allocation process. Now, as you might recall um, from seeing an earlier demo, one of the tasks that we have anytime we select a data manager type of package is the ability to view the status of that. So we can come in and see how the top-down allocation is proceeding. And so it just takes a couple minutes for the allocation to be performed. And as, we're, as this allocation finishes, we're going to come back to a report that's going to show the results of um, the top-down allocation. One other note about the allocation um, capability. Allocations can span multiple versions. So if you need to use allocations for budget and you have the same scenario for actuals, then you can use the same allocation where you define it one time in one place and then it's going to be utilized everywhere within the application for any version of data that you choose. And now we can see our top-down allocation has completed successfully. So we're just going to go back to the business process flow. And then want to just take one more look at the version comparison so we can take a look and make sure that those targets got allocated the way we expect. And we can see that they did. So now we see our top-down target um, as compared to budget version one and budget version two. And now we're just going to go back to the business process flow. And there may be some additional things that you need to do as part of the initiation of the budgeting process. Okay, and you can also see here, I didn't point this out, that you have the ability to see um, the target now in the graph. So we can pretty easily identify um, any areas of um, difference there. So at this point, you may need to do something like load payroll data. So if you want to go ahead and see the budget with existing headcount and their salary information, uh, this is where you would do that. You also might want to post policies and procedures. So we're going to take a look at an example of that. But this allows you to post any types of unstructured documents, unstructured data that you may have. You notice the action pane here walks you through the process of selecting the file um, and actually attaching it or posting it to the application so that users can access it later. And a lot of customers use this for things like calendars, um, training material, policies, procedures, all that type of thing can be posted to the application and you can make it available right from the business process flow. So at this point, we're done with the initiation of the budget. We're going to go ahead and complete this step and that's going to lock step one and make step two available for input and um, for the revenue and cost of sales.